Thank you, Miles, for the introduction. It's a pleasure and an honor to uh, be uh, speaking here. Uh, actually, I'm right now not in Leipzig, but I'm at the ETH in Zurich for uh, some time uh, where I give a course. And uh, so, uh, yeah, so the title uh, is, uh, uh, shows kind of the main content. It's about uh, optimal transportation, which uh, by now is, is a classical subject. And uh, Gail Goldman, who now is in Paris, he was at some time also postdoc in Leipzig, uh, and I started a while ago. And by now, together with Martin Hussmann and uh, Tatsu Amiura and uh, Maxime Prodom and Tobias Reed, we have a couple of extensions. I perhaps have a chance of mentioning, mentioning this. So uh, this is one first busy slide where I, I tell a bit for the experts what uh, uh, this is about, but then I will take uh, enough time to remind you of what optimal transportation is, uh, why this relates to the mont jean equation, uh, uh, what, uh, uh, what the main ideas are. So, uh, so those who don't know uh, things so much on this page don't get, uh, uh, don't get uh, kind of uh, um, deterred too much. Uh, so, so essentially, in a nutshell, uh, one might say that uh, we're, we're following uh, uh, the old philosophy or approach of De Georgi to the regularity of minimal surfaces, uh, where if for those who know that area, uh, the harmonic approximation is kind of a key step. So a key step in doing this regularity theory is to show that uh, a minimal surface might be locally well approximated by the graph of a harmonic function. And since harmonic functions, the regularity theory for harmonic functions is uh, almost trivial, uh, uh, that's kind of the way to get the foot into, uh, into the door by kind of lifting the obvious regularity theory for harmonic functions to minimal surfaces. So the harmonic approximation is really a key step in, in the setup. And in a certain sense, we're, we'll do exactly the same thing. We'll, uh, uh, approximate the displacement uh, by a harmonic gradient. And once you do this, once you have the harmonic approximation set up, then this feeds into a kind of more or less general theory, which gives you what's called a one-step improvement, which feeds into what's called a Campanato iteration, which gives what's called epsilon regularity, and then uh, may also yield partial regularity. And the outcome here in case of optimal transportation is a, is a kind of a, an epsilon regularity theory, which leads kind of a, a C2 alpha, so a Helder space regularity for uh, up to the second derivatives uh, for the potential in optimal transportation. I will remind you of that, what, what that is, which means is a C1 alpha regularity theory for the map. And so I'm stressing that this is uh, that the novelty is um, not so much in, 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 in the results, but in the approach, which in our case is purely variational. So there will be no maximum principle. So it completely bypasses the celebrated uh, regularity theory by Caffarelli. And their applications are kind of uh, uh, old and new. The old applications uh, are related to what's called partial regularity and kind of take up uh, work or reproduce with a different wor uh, proof work by uh, Figali and Kim uh, and De Filippis and Figali, um, also regularity uh, theory up to the boundary by Chen and Figali. But it also allows to, new, to do new things, which is related to the so-called matching problem. And perhaps I have the time um, of saying something about this. So now, so this was kind of a brief, uh, uh, a brief, uh, uh, outlook of what, what the main subject is of the talk. And now I slow down and tell you, remind you of what optimal transportation is. So optimal transportation is, 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 is a way of relating to uh, non-negative measures of equal mass. So you know, with the loss loss of generality, think of probability measures, mu and lambda and rd. And, uh, uh, and in a certain sense, it's called optimal transportation because you should think of these masses as being made out of tiny particles and you really ship particles from one place to the other. 
and you want to do it in a so-called optimal way, which is a variation problem which already Mange came up with. And the modern formulation uh, by Kantorovich is measure theoretic. And uh, uh, what you're looking for is a so-called transfer plan pi, uh, which uh, lives on the product space. And it has its first marginal mu and its second marginal lambda. So it's a way of coupling these two probability measures. And then you're optimizing, you're minimizing the transportation cost. So the squared Euclidean distance by which you ship the infinitesimal mass, which is sitting at a point X to the infinitesimal mass, which is sitting at the point Y. And, uh, uh, and the minimum uh, of, um, of this variation problem uh, uh, is, at least I, I tend to call it the Wasserstein distance, other people call it the Mange, Kantorovich, Rubinstein distance. So in this case, it's the square of, in fact, a metric on the space of probability measures, which metrizes the uh, um, uh, topology of weak convergence. So that's optimal transportation. Um, so there is, a, there is a, a connection between optimal transportation and a well-studied uh, uh, highly nonlinear partial differential equation, which is the so-called mange ampere equation. And uh, uh, this slide is to remind you uh, of this or you tell you the story if you don't know. So here again is the, is the problem of optimal transportation. You're minimizing the transportation cost overall transportation plans pi, which have the right marginals. And let's think of the second one of being the Lebesgue measure for simplicity of this discussion and the first one, the general measure. Then it's a consequence of purely convex analysis that the optimal pi is supported as a measure on the product space. The support on the measure is uh, on the subgradient of a convex function psi. So uh, uh, a pair of points is in the support of the measure pi uh, if and only if uh, y is in the subgradient of psi at the point x. So it's sometimes also called cyclically monotone property of this support. And um, so, uh, uh, so we know that uh, uh, convex functions have gradients almost everywhere. Uh, so I can even write down nabla, uh, nabla psi. And then the fact that pi has the right marginal means that in fact, uh, the Lebesgue measure is the push forward, as we say, of nabla psi, uh, of the push forward of mu under the nabla psi. And now if you assume everything were smooth, so in particular, psi was smooth, then you could use the transformation uh, rule on the, uh, um, on, uh, on, on, on the right-hand side integral. And you could see that this condition here, this weak formulation turns into uh, this partial differential equation uh, where the determinant of the Jacobian of the gradient, so the determinant of the Hessian which is a symmetric positive, positive definite uh, uh, matrix that the determinant is given by mu. And that's an instance of a Mange-Ampere equation. And that's the connection between optimal transportation and the Mange-Ampere equation. So you may say the Mange-Ampere equation is the Euler-Lagrange equation of optimal transportation. So the Mange-Ampere equation by itself is interesting because it's kind of a, a very natural example of what's called a fully nonlinear uh, PDE uh, in the sense that uh, uh, you have an equation of the form f of the second derivative matrix is equal to zero where this function f is a highly nonlinear function. It's not the trace, it's the determinant. And, uh, uh, but however, it's an elliptic, it's, uh, it's an elliptic equation. It satisfies the comparison principle. Uh, it's uh, 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 kind of a uh, um, amenable to viscosity, uh, viscosity solution methods. And, uh, and therefore it's kind of very natural point of view, very natural uh, nonlinear PDE. But however, it's uh, not just highly nonlinear, it's also degenerate. It starts being, it stops being uniformly elliptic when you get at the boundary of the set where the matrices are strictly positive definite. And this degeneracy is kind of reflected by the fact that it has a very large 
invariant space, meaning it's affine invariant instead of just rotational invariant, which we know for the Laplace operator. So it has a non-compact uh, uh, group acting on it, uh, which is the reverse of the metal of being uh, degen degenerate. And but still, so as I mentioned at the beginning, uh, there is the breakthrough of Caffarelli who uh, um, used comparison principle, affine invariance, compactness to develop a regularity theory uh, for this equation. So therefore, I mean, looking at the variational pro uh, problem for optimal transportation is interesting because in a certain sense, we're at the crossroad between a variational structure and uh, a fully nonlinear structure. And now we will look at this side. Um, this is um, uh, a reminder that, um, um, that the regularity theory for optimal transportation is subtle. Uh, there is no reason to, uh, 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 to assume, or in, in general, these maps, uh, uh, the gradients of the uh, uh, convex potential have no reason to be smooth. And there is uh, kind of uh, almost a folklore uh, ensemble uh, example of this, uh, uh, where uh, the two measures are just, uh, um, or the densities have Lebesgue densities, and uh, those Lebesgue densities are just characteristic functions. And uh, one of the um, sets is a ball, and the other set is kind of a smoothed out version of two halves balls uh, kind of removed from each other. And then, uh, uh, then it's easy to convince oneself that the uh, Although uh, the sets are smoothly bounded, uh, the optimal transportation map between these two sets, and even if you would smooth out the densities, is, not, uh, is discontinuous. So therefore, it's interesting even to develop something like epsilon regularity. So a statement of the type uh, that if uh, uh, the two measures have smooth densities and if their transportation distance is small, then things are smooth. So this is, would be the analogy to, analogy to minimal surfaces where uh, we know that in high dimensions, again, uh, they're not uh, smooth in general, but there is always this type of smallness implies regularity result. And that's exactly what we're going to do. And as I mentioned at the beginning, uh, it will rely on uh, a harmonic approximation result. So the fact that uh, if, uh, we have uh, two measures which at least locally are close to constant. And if uh, the transportation distance is below a threshold in a suitable non-dimensional sense, then uh, we show that the displacement, so the amount by which you ship the mass integrated against the transference plan locally is the gradient of a harmonic function. So, uh, so that's in, uh, in words kind of the main, uh, the main ingredient to get, our, uh, to get started. And uh, the, next, uh, the next slide is uh, exactly stating this, uh, which is in a certain sense the core of our result and which might be of independent interest. And uh, I will stay with this slide and kind of slides which look very similar for a while, so there is no need to uh, try to absorb uh, things in one, uh, one simple going. So, uh, uh, so we uh, were given an optimal transference plan pi between uh, the measures mu and lambda, and we look at the local transportation cost. So uh, uh, here we take our kind of radius to be of order one, so for some reason six, uh, appears here because in the end we end up with one. So don't worry too much about this numerology. So we have a local transportation cost, which uh, uh, we control. And we have a local uh, a size of the data. So uh, we locally measure how close our measure mu, and the same holds for the target measure lambda, how close the measure mu is to a uniform distribution kappa uh, in this ball of size six, and we measure in the right topology, which means we measure in the Wasserstein topology. So uh, here we don't, uh, these measures can be completely atomic. There's no reason for them, uh, there's no reason for them being, uh, uh, being uh, uh, 
uh, smooth for, for the purpose of the statement. And now uh, comes a, a kind of a typical harmonic approximation at the result. So given some small number tau, uh, there exists a threshold epsilon, which only depends on tau and the dimension d and constant, such that if the local energy and the local data size is below this threshold epsilon, then there exists a harmonic gradient, so meaning uh, all the partial derivatives are harmonic functions, uh, of which the Dirichlet energy is well controlled, such that uh, the displacement x minus y is pretty well approximated by the gradient of this uh, uh, harmonic function and here I could have put either x or y, that's a higher order term, and for um, justice I put the midpoint between x and y. So, uh, so the displacement is close to the harmonic gradient, and this here is substantially smaller than the original transport energy because this uh, um, uh, small parameter tau appears in front of the e, and remember tau was just a given uh, small number, and then there is a big constant in front of the data term. So, uh, so in that sense, uh, this statement uh, uh, states that the displacement uh, in optimal transportation, uh, provided you're in the small, uh, uh, small cost and small data regime, is close to harmonic gradient. So let me uh, explain, this, uh, explain this statement, uh, the statement a bit more in detail. Uh, and comment a bit more. So uh, uh, the first comment is, here is again the statement, so uh, you have still uh, the chance to look at it. The statement, uh, uh, the statement states that, uh, uh, here I want to make the point that in a certain sense the statement has the correct homogeneities because uh, the local transportation cost is something that's, if you want, quadratic in the solution, it's quadratic in the displacement, it's quadratic in, uh, in, uh, in, in, in the Brunier map. Uh, the data term is something that's quadratic, it's the square of the Wasserstein distance. And uh, also uh, the output we're looking at here is something that's quadratic in the displacement. So uh, all the, homo all the homo homo homogeneities of all the terms, the blue, uh, the red, the, um, the blue term, and uh, this blue term, and the green term, they have the, right, the same quadratic homogeneity. So it's a little bit like uh, the analogy would be a little bit like uh, what you would do for uh, a uniformly convex uh, but non-quadratic variational problem, where you could also show that you can approximate a minimizer well by a harmonic gradient up to a small, small multiple of the energy and a big multiple of the data term. So, uh, uh, so it, it looks, it has the right, uh, it has the right flavor for uh, kind of a nonlinear, a nonlinear problem. Um, so let me now tell you a bit uh, how, uh, uh, how we get this uh, kind of harmonic approximation problem uh, property. And uh, that's uh, an excuse to tell you a bit more about optimal transportation, kind of, uh, I know it's a, it's a classical field, but I think it's a, it's a very nice area. And uh, what something uh, we use is something quite classical, uh, namely the equivalence uh, between the Lagrangian and the uh, Eulerian point of view in optimal transportation, which was uh, observed by uh, Bonamou and Brunier. And uh, here I'm explaining on this slide, I'm explaining to you the, uh, uh, the uh, uh, Eulerian side. The Lagrangian side is the one which uh, I, we, had in the, uh, we had in the beginning. And uh, so uh, this picture here refers to the Lagrangian side where you really have uh, uh, kind of uh, uh, particles located at X, uh, particle located at Y, a transfer plan pi. And, uh, and that's, uh, these two pictures refer to the, um, uh, to the Eulerian side, uh, where uh, you look at uh, kind of pairs of, um, instead of looking kind of at trajectories of particles which move in time, you're looking at pairs of uh, density rho and flux j, which uh, 
satisfy what's called the continuity equation and you monitor what is the kinetic energy of uh, such a pair of uh, uh, rho and j. And the statement of uh, Benamou Brunier is that the Wasserstein distance between the two measures mu and lambda, uh, the square of it, could as well be obtained by minimizing the kinetic energy over all uh, pairs of density flux, which satisfy the continuity equation, and which at time t0 uh, 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 connect the measure mu to the measure lambda at time t1. So there is kind of now some artificial time t, which goes from 0 to 1, and uh, 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 which uh, kind of uh, appears here in the definition of this uh, variational problem on the Eulerian side. So why is it not surprising that this is a good way of looking at the problem uh, when you want to prove regularity? So the reason for that is that um, while on the Lagrangian side, the problem almost looked like, or in fact was a completely linear convex degenerate problem because you're minimizing a functional that's linear in pi over all admissible pi in a convex set. So this problem, this side of the problem doesn't reveal, at least in the Mange formulation, doesn't reveal at all anything strictly convex. Uh, the blue side, the Eulerian side does. And the reason for that is, is that this innocuous looking functional, you associate to a positive number rho and a vector j, this number here is a strictly convex function. It's not instantly obvious, but that's one of the things I learned from Jan Bernier a long time ago, and that's crucial. So in a certain sense, you rewrote the problem as something which with a strictly convex functionals, and that of course is uh, something which in a certain sense gives you hope to develop a variational uh, uh, regularity result, a regularity theory. So here now is, <clears throat> um, here now is our result again, uh, reformulated uh, in, uh, 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 on, the, uh, on the Eulerian version. So, uh, uh, so now we're, uh, we're looking, we're not looking at the map pi, at the transport plan pi, but we look at the pair of uh, uh, density and flux, which are related to pi by these uh, natural formulas. And uh, instead of writing the local energy in a Lagrangian way, we write it in this Eulerian way by integrating the kinetic energy over a finite space time, quote unquote time, um, a cylinder. And then uh, this is just in a certain sense a reformulation of the result. Uh, uh, it can be stated like this. Uh, if uh, uh, this Eulerian transport energy is small and the data term is small as before, then there exists a harmonic gradient so that this expression here, which relates uh, the ratio of j and rho to grad phi is much smaller than the uh, 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 than E, so kind of noise, a good noise to signal ratio. And again, this can be interpreted in a, in a kind of mechanical way uh, by recalling that, uh, or by noticing that the ratio of the flux and the density, in fact, is nothing else than the velocity, the Eulerian velocity. So in a certain sense, our result can also be interpreted that the Eulerian velocity in optimal transportation in the small data, in the small energy regime, is an, in fact uh, uh, close to a harmonic gradient. And, uh, and now you may already almost guess uh, how, uh, how one proves this, uh, this harmonic approximation. And uh, that's, uh, that's kind of a slide to, uh, to, give you, uh, uh, to give you a rough idea of how this is done. So uh, somehow given uh, given uh, the Legrand, the Eulerian, sorry, the Eulerian uh, version of optimal transportation, so uh, we're given uh, a pair of the density rho and uh, a flux j that satisfy the continuity equation, and we connect uh, at initial time our density, given density mu, to uh, uh, the given density lambda at the final time. And now to such a setting, we want to associate uh, harmonic function. 
And uh, so, uh, so we need, uh, in order to define it via a Poisson problem, we need uh, boundary data for this harmonic function. And uh, flux boundary data, Neumann boundary data, are the most natural because in a certain sense, we already we also have Neumann boundary data, flux boundary data for, uh, the, uh, for this fluid dynamics, for this Eulerian side. Namely, if we are on a ball, uh, on the cylinder, which has a base uh, of a ball of radius uh, B, uh, radius R, then we have the, the mantle, uh, the, yeah, the, uh, the lateral boundary of the cylinder, and we can consider uh, at the flux in and out of this boundary, so the normal component nu times J of our flux, we call this F. And so, uh, uh, so that's uh, a flux which flows through this lateral boundary of our cylinder. And we take the time average of this flux and we call this F bar. And that's supposed to be the, uh, uh, the Neumann data of, uh, uh, of uh, the Poisson problem, which defines the harmonic gradient. So we need to allow, we only have harmonic gradients and not harmonic function because we need to allow for a non-zero constant here because the integral of F bar in general will not be equal to zero. But this is how we, that's the simple idea of how to construct this harmonic approximation. And uh, so that's a kind of a schematic picture, how you pass from the, um, from the Eulerian side to the Poisson problem and then back how this feeds into the, uh, uh, and to the Eulerian side. And you do that, you have to, when you do that, you have to choose a, so a good radius R uh, um, uh, when, you, when you carry out this construction. So that's the, in, the idea, in the end, the idea how you relate this uh, highly nonlinear problem of optimal transportation in its Eulerian version to the linear kind of well-studied uh, Poisson problem. Um, let me look at my watch. Okay, so I guess I still have a bit more than ten minutes or so. Um, so uh, here is um, uh, here is kind of uh, uh, a typical uh, application, uh, um, uh, which I already mentioned in the beginning, uh, namely a, a so-called uh, epsilon regularity result, which uh, uh, just mimics uh, the uh, 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 the famous. Uh, uh, result by, by De Filippis and Figali, but now with this different proof. Uh, namely, uh, uh, if we, uh, so we, uh, uh, we, we're, given, uh, we're given two measures, uh, um, mu and nu, which come from uh, uh, smooth uh, or Hölder continuous densities, F and G. Let's uh, normalize them by having the value one at the origin. Uh, we look uh, in some radius R, we look at the, um, uh, at the uh, transport distance now written with help of the Bonnier map, the map that uh, transports uh, one density on the other by push forward. Uh, we have the data term, which are the uh, Hölder uh, norms, the alpha Hölder norms, the alpha semi norms of these two densities, uh, properly non-dimensionalized here. All these quantities are non-dimensionalized in the natural way. And then the statement is if these, uh, if the local energy is small enough and the data term is small enough, then indeed um, in, uh, in a ball of half the radius, the uh, gradient of the Brunier map is alpha Hölder continuous and we get exactly the right type of uh, a PDE estimate with the right homogeneity Hölder norm of grad T estimated by the Hölder norm of F and G uh, plus uh, uh, kind of an L2 type of norm. So that's a typical um, epsilon regularity result, which we recover from, uh, from this harmonic, uh, harmonic approximation. Um, uh, so here, uh, here again uh, is, the, uh, is the statement uh, written slightly differently, this time in terms of the potential. And, uh, and this is, in a certain sense, the main difference in the... Uh, in the, in the approach uh, between uh, uh, De Filippis Figali uh, on the one hand and our approach, namely is that they um, carry out a perturbation theory around the nonlinear equation, which is the Mangin-Pair equation with a constant right-hand side for which they have a, 
epsilon regularity by the result of Figali and Kim, which in turn relies on um, Caffarelli. Whereas we right away jump to the linear equation. So we perturb around the Poisson equation. And uh, one consequence of jumping right away, I mean, not doing this intermediate step is that uh, we uh, get pretty much for free the right homogeneities in our final estimate. Uh, and we get it in one step. Uh, uh, we don't have to boot, bootstrap in kind of several, uh, several steps. And, but again, I would say the main difference is uh, that uh, uh, we use strictly just variational arguments, uh, whereas um, uh, they use uh, uh, the, uh, the comparison principle uh, in, uh, in a heavy way. So it's a, it's, a, it's a kind of orthogonal approach. We also, perhaps I can jump over this uh, uh, with uh, Tatsuya Miwa, who uh, is in Tokyo, was also at some point postdoc in Leipzig. Uh, uh, we have a similar result uh, uh, for boundary regularity, where again we get kind of the right uh, uh, the right homogeneities and the right type of uh, norms on the right hand side in terms of the boundary data. So, but in, in the interest of time, I'm going to jump over this. Um, there is uh, uh, um, so those are in a certain sense recovering, perhaps slightly improving existing results. Uh, the um, uh, kind of a more uh, uh, um, a more novel application uh, has to do uh, with the uh, with the problem of um, uh, matching, uh, which is a problem which came up in in computer science. So the uh, uh, the goal is to uh, match uh, the um, uh, Poisson uh, uh, point measure, so a very singular measure. Uh, where uh, at a kind of random points, so Poisson point distributed points, you put Dirac measures. So that's uh, kind of the measure uh, on the one hand. And on the other hand, you put, uh, 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 let's say, uh, either another uh, instance of this measure or uh, 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 the Lebesgue measure. And you want to transport one and the other, and you're interested in large scales. And you want to kind of in a certain sense, say something about the hydrodynamic limit, about local fluctuations. Um, and, uh, and that's exactly a problem where uh, our uh, regularity theory is quite helpful because the uh, harmonic approximation, which I showed to you at the very beginning, kind of can deal with completely rough measures. So uh, whereas uh, the maximal regularity based uh, result and has as a starting point, the Alexandrov comparison, uh, 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 lemmas which re always rely that the density, at least that's my understanding, that the densities are bounded away from zero and infinity, whereas here, you know, we can take any measures. So it's, it's helpful in that direction. Uh, since my time is close to getting over, I spare discussing uh, what we get, uh, which kind of large scale uh, uh, linearization we get here. And uh, Perhaps I'm, I'm telling you just in the remaining couple of minutes uh, a bit uh, uh, more about uh, how to uh, uh, get this harmonic approximation result. I mean, I've told you how to construct the uh, harmonic function phi, but uh, perhaps I can tell you a little bit uh, uh, what's involved in the, in the proof. And in fact, uh, um, that is uh, already non-trivial but best seen in the case where the two measures are locally constant. So locally, the Lebesgue measure uh, in some ball, that's still kind of a non-trivial situation and allows to kind of make the statements clear. And that's, that was what uh, uh, Michael Goldman and I started with. So, uh, so again, uh, we look at the, um, at the solution of the Poisson problem. In this case, we can really take zero as the right-hand side with a flux bound with Neumann boundary data, where the F bar is given by the time average of the normal component of J. And the statement is that uh, uh, this, uh, uh, the Dirichlet energy, that's the less, less important part of the statement, is, um, is estim I mean, the Dirichlet energy of this harmonic uh, function is estimated by the energy of optimum transportation. But the more important statement is again that uh, 
um, uh, the transport velocity, the ratio of J and rho can be approximated by grad phi in the sense here. And the crucial thing here is the fact that this is a super quadratic approximation, uh, that this exponent here is strictly larger than one. And in fact, it comes out in a very explicit way from uh, some isoparametric principle. And, uh, uh, and in, in, a, in a certain sense, it, it, th th this statement reflects that uh, um, for densities close to one, the Wasserstein distance is not so different from the H minus one distance, something which uh, uh, Cédric Villani and I kind of uh, remarked a long time ago. And so, uh, uh, so that's really kind of in the, the simplest version of this harmonic approximation result. And uh, uh, so it, um, it, uh, here it is stated again, or the most important part is stated again, kind of this, uh, 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 this uh, uh, estimate here uh, with this exponent strictly larger than one. And so, uh, uh, so it proceeds in, in kind of uh, three ways. Uh, uh, first, you have to construct phi. I already told you how to do it by solving this, uh, uh, by solving this, uh, um, uh, this Poisson problem. Uh, then um, you have to use something which is uh, kind of an orthogonality property, which, uh, which we know very well from quadratic variational problems, which tell you that the, uh, that the square of the distance between the minimizer and a competitor is controlled by the difference in their energies. That's always true for a quadratic variational problem. And it remains true, at least uh, not as an identity, but as an inequality for uh, the variational problem at hand. So, uh, so this quantity here, which is the distance between uh, the actual minimizer rho, uh, J rho and the competitor is estimated by the difference in the energy of the actual minimizing of the actual minimizers and the energy of the competitor. But here you change problems, right, from uh, nonlinear to linear, or from non-enharmonic to quadratic. And that, in this special case, is is a nice consequence of uh, McCann's displacement convexity, which ensures that rho is always less or equal to one. And then you have to do something, you have to construct a competitor. You have to, uh, based, uh, based on grad phi, you have to construct uh, a rho tilde, j tilde, um, uh, so that, uh, which solves uh, the, uh, the optimal transportation problem, so that its energy is controlled by the Dirichlet energy, plus a little bit with the exponent larger than one. And that, uh, that essentially requires a boundary layer construction because, uh, because the mismatch between, uh, uh, between the, the optimal transportation side and the Poisson side is really that on the Poisson side, you have averaged over uh, your boundary flux. So you have to kind of accommodate the difference between the time averaged boundary flux and the non-time averaged boundary flux. And that requires a boundary layer construction and the estimate of it follows from kind of, if you want an isoparametric estimate, some kind of trace uh, type of estimate. And that brings in these, uh, these exponents in the end. So that's, uh, that's, the, that's the idea. And like in minimal surfaces, um, there, is, uh, uh, there is this isoparametric principle which comes in kind of uh, lower dimensional isoparametric principle. In fact, there is quite a number of analogies uh, between, as I mentioned in the beginning, the regularity theory for minimal surfaces, for instance, as it was uh, developed by, by Schoen and Simon, uh, and what we're doing here. And, uh, and this slide, but I think I'm running out of time, accounts for, uh, uh, for, this, uh, for this high level of analogy between, uh, between, uh, between, the two, uh, between the two approaches. Okay, so I think uh, I'm out of time. There are a bit more details, so let me uh, let me let me summarize. So, uh, 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 so in a certain sense, the talk was an excuse to talk about optimal transportation, and uh, what I told you about is uh, a variational way of uh, uh, carrying out um, uh, uh, carrying out a regularity theory, and. Uh, 
where uh, the key kind of uh, the key tool, uh, uh, the machine room is is a harmonic approximation, and uh, and in a certain sense, this harmonic approximation is 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 very natural from uh, from the point of view of optimal transportation, in particular, in its Eulerian and its ben, uh, benamou brunier formulation, and uh, uh, it. Um, it allows to reprove, perhaps in a slightly uh, sharper way, uh, uh, some of the results which have been around with the uh, uh, with the other methods, uh, um, uh, in particular boundary regularity. Recently, we generalized it to uh, to general cost functions, uh, but it also, I guess, allows to to do new things. And I just vaguely touched upon this, like this matching problem, which. Uh, um, uh, was kind of rediscovered by by PISA physicists and then was taken over by PISA analysts, and uh, I think that's a, that's an interesting interesting problem, and that's where where we want to make um, uh, more progress in in the future with uh, um, Martin Husman and uh, uh, Mikhail Bergman, and I think I should stop because I kind of used up my forty five minutes.